The doctor is in and he's here to share some important information about epilepsy, which is a brain disorder affecting 3.4 million people in the U.S. and nearly a quarter of a million here in Florida. Joining me is Dr. Jay Rator, the director of the Epilepsy Division of the Watson Clinic, and he's brought along Meredith Terrian, executive director of the Epilepsy Foundation of Florida. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for having us. We so appreciate having our medical experts on here to, to get all of this great information. And let's start at the beginning. For someone who doesn't know, what is epilepsy? So epilepsy is uh, probably the fourth common, most common neurological disorder, okay. and it's a problem of uh, electrical system of the brain. Uh, our brain is a very electrical organ, mm -hmm. and it is supposed to work in a very synchronized, organized way. And for if any reason the electrical system gets abnormal discharges, uh, that can lead to various symptoms, which is basically epilepsy. And one of the manifestations is having seizures, mm -hmm. uh, which is can be a very mild electrical current. Many times I give this analogy to my patients that uh, it's like a hurricane. Okay. okay. So if you get a very uh, category one or a tropical storm uh, and the breeze and you feel it, people usually call it aura. Okay. If it gets more intense, it is category two or three, people lose consciousness. They can be steering spells or something of that sort. And if it gets a level five like a Dorian, uh, <laughs> it can cause uh, whole body shaking, okay. tongue biting. Which is normally what we who don't live it day in and out yeah. sort of associate with yeah. epilepsy. Who is at risk for this? Could it be anyone at any age? Any brain can seize potentially. Okay. Oh wow. So we don't we want do that. See, yeah. So we do see that uh, people from uh, young age, like right from the time they are born mm -hmm. to the age in the geriatric population. But there are two distinct peaks that occur at the age two and age after 60. And okay. Uh, it can be from a variety of reasons, including at birth the brain has some malformation, or it could be some insult, like a trauma, mm -hmm. or a bleed, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, you know some <coughs> uh, infections leading to you know brain infections, and that can cause seizures. So, it, variety of reasons, and across the spectrum. I can imagine that if you have epilepsy, if you have those category five, that's sort of, you're living in a fear. So exactly. what do you guys do? You know, there's Epilepsy Foundation Florida. What do you do to help people that are living with epilepsy? So we like to address the stigma that's associated with epilepsy. So our real main goal and mission here is to increase the conversation about epilepsy, to have more folks talking about it, to provide resources and advocacy for those Floridians living with epilepsy mm -hmm. and seizures. And what is the treatment like then for someone with epilepsy? So uh, when patient comes in with the first time seizure of the life, mm -hmm. so we have to see the cause and the treatment is accordingly. And when the seizures happen recurrently, so that's what the definition of epilepsy, when it r happens recurrently. And uh, there are like uh, some 22, 23 medications out there available uh, that you can, we can try uh, to you know, control the seizures. And around 64% uh, of the patient uh, do better, mm -hmm. and some of them are seizure-free on medications. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, 36% of the patients do not, you know, get control. The seizures are oh, not controlled. Wow. Uh, then uh, their surgery is an option. Oh, okay. So there is a lot of development in that, and we have robotic surgeries available. Uh, and uh, you know, some people unfortunately are not candidate for surgery. Let's say it's on a very Eloquent cortex of the brain, mm -hmm. where the language is there, and there is you know memory is there. Go, go you don't want to take that it out because you're going to affect the rest exactly. of their quality of life. So yeah. we have now uh, uh, brain stimulation available. Uh, one of them is responsive neurostimulation. One of them is a vagus neurostimulation. Uh, so we do all that to you know control the seizures. So they continuously track the brain activity. As soon as they detect a seizure, they zap it with a current to diffuse it. So it's like uh, you put a zap current through a hurricane, try that's, to diffuse that's it. That's very cool. Very, Not as same very as cool. nuking yeah. a hurricane, but <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't. We don't want to do that. But this sounds like a that. great option for people. So, so there are quite a few options, mm -hmm. and there are some dietary options. Uh, you might have heard it's it's a uh, you know pretty uh, ketogenic. popular ketogenic yep, diet. Yep. Uh, that's an option. Okay. So we we put in everything together case-by-case case basis, you know. To make sure that you're giving sure people that. sort of an all-around exactly. treatment plan. And I know you have the walk to end epilepsy, so tell us about that. We do. We're very excited. On October 26th, we have our very first walk to end epilepsy here in Tampa. It's at Al Lopez Park in downtown Tampa, so we encourage everybody to join us, um, to participate in this with us, to help us increase the conversation about epilepsy and the awareness and the advocacy around it, addressing it so that we can have folks live better quality of life with seizures. Well, thank you. 
you. I know you guys are going to do a great job at the walk, and you have so increased much. the advocacy and awareness just by being here with us today. If you guys would like more information, you can visit walktoinepilepsy.org slash Tampa. Thank you guys both so much for Thanks being here. Thanks for having us. Stay tuned. We'll be more, back with more Bloom right after this. When intense back or neck pain hits, BioSpine offers more specialized spine care than an emergency room at Urgent Care Speed.